Hello everyone, uh, thank you for joining us and welcome to our first webinar of 2021. Um, this evening we're going to be focusing on calf health and registrations. So my name is Owen Maloney and I'm Head of Member Experience here at Herdwatch. Um, you're probably used to me doing the webinars at this stage. Um, but I'm also delighted to be joined here this evening by Kevin O'Sullivan. Um, Kevin is from Bandon in County Cork. He's part of Glasslin Vet Clinic, but he's also chairman of XL Vets uh, as well. So, Kevin, thanks a million for joining us this evening. How are you keeping? Not so bad. Th thanks very much, Owen, for asking. Um, Good Good to help. Thank you, thanks a million. We're delighted to have you on board this evening, Kevin. So um, we're going to be hearing a lot more from Kevin in, in a couple of minutes, um, everybody. So he's going to give us a lot of advice this evening around, I suppose, all things cow and calf health, uh, I suppose, during, before, during and after your calving season. So uh, Kevin has some really, really good slides prepared and he's going to give some really, really good and helpful information there. Um, so if you do have any questions or queries throughout the webinar um, for either myself or for Kevin, uh, do feel free to just use the chat facility. If you've been on webinars before, you know where it is. It's, I think it's at the bottom of your screen there. So just pop any questions or queries that you do have into the chat facility. We're going to leave a couple of minutes aside um, at the end of the webinar today to just deal with any questions or queries that do come in. Um, so feel free to ask questions away. Um, we do have John and James uh, helping out this evening as well. So they will be responding to your, your questions throughout the webinar. And like I said, we're going to leave some time at the end where myself and Kevin will answer some questions that have come in as well. Um, before I do hand over to Kevin, um, I, I suppose there's probably a lot of people here this evening that's your first webinar or maybe you're even new to Herdwatch or you've only recently got yourself set up. So uh, just to give you a, a very quick um, overview of the Herdwatch story to date and, and exactly what Herdwatch is. Um, so Herdwatch is just a very simple and easy to use app which allows you to reduce your farm paperwork and save a lot of time uh, on your farm, especially in relation to you know doing your compliance recording and paperwork recording but it also allows you to make a lot better decisions on your farm based on the information that you put in there. So Herdwatch, it's now just seven years old. So since we did launch back in 2014, we've managed to do really, really well and have become the market leading app in both Ireland and in the UK. Um, and as you can see there, we've now over 14 and a half thousand members uh, using our, our app and our software um, in Ireland, in the UK and in Northern Ireland as well. So. Um, really really huge amount of members using it and getting massive benefits out of having the app uh, and having i suppose their farm in their pocket uh, we also have over 1.7 million million animals that have been synced into our database uh, from all the departments that we're linked to so here in ireland we're, we're linked up directly with the department of ag, ag food over in the uk we obviously link in directly with bcms and up northern ireland we are linked in with AFIS as well and we very recently um, surpassed another milestone of 1.4 million calves that have been registered using the Herdwatch app, um, which is a huge thing for us. And we're obviously hoping that that's going to grow massively in 2021. There's also been over 13 million records that have been recorded uh, on the Herdwatch app over the last seven years, including all, lots of medicines and, and treatment records, movements, weights, and as we're going to deal with tonight, calf registrations. Also, just want to let you know about our, our super refer a friend uh, scheme that we've been running for the past couple of months. Um, this really couldn't be easier for you to get your hands on some of the really cool Herdwatch gear and goodies that we have on offer there at the moment. Um, it's a very straightforward and easy process for you to do. So it's just if you have uh, friends or, or other farming friends that you know um, that are not set up on Herdwatch that you think would benefit out of having the Herdwatch app, just to just literally tell them about Herdwatch, get them to download the app and set up their free account. Um, and once you do that, you, you can you can basically claim uh, some of the, the goodies and rewards that we have on offer there. You can see yourself, it ranges from, from bottles and jackets to, you know, uh, overalls, bib and braces and, and even wellies. So, you know, just get your friends to download the app and set up their account um, and just, you'll be able to claim your reward from there. Um, we also, uh, just in relation to uh, FRS, which Herdwatch is obviously a part of, um, they've launched a new initiative this springtime. They're looking for, for people who will be interested in becoming operators or becoming relief milkers here in Ireland. So if that is something that you would be interested in, in hearing a little bit more about, or if it's something you'd like to do, um, you have some spare time and you'd like to get some, some extra hours, uh, you can just find out more by visiting farmrelief.ie or, or farm forward slash careers. 
and you, uh, you'll be able to see what roles are on offer there at the moment. So check that out if you are interested in, in getting some uh, more extra hours um, off farm. So nearly ready to hand over to you, Kevin, um, well, in the next minute or so. Just what exactly is it that we're going to be covering this evening, everyone? So as I said, Kevin's going to take over here now in a couple of seconds and he's going to take you through the slides he's got ready there. Um, everything got to do with your um, cow and calf health. So your calving checklist, management of your young calves, post calving, and uh, your dry cow management. And once Kevin finishes up, then I'm going to take over again for a few minutes and actually uh, show you how to how easy it is and how quick it is to register your calves in Herdwatch itself and um, both um, single calves and our, our, a new feature to our complete plan, which is our bulk calf registration feature. So I'm going to demo and show you how that works as well this evening. And we'll finish up then with maybe five to 10 minutes of questions and answers. So as I said at the start, if you do have any questions, feel free to keep them coming in and myself and Kevin will do our best to answer as many as we can at the end. So I'm going to hand over to you now, Kevin, if you're Perfect. ready to go. Um, Perfect. That's brilliant talk here. So I suppose I'm, I'm going to talk really very brief, well, 15, 20 minutes trying to sum up the how we can get our, give everything the best chance to get a good calf, um, a healthy calf produced at the end of the season. Um, so really, uh, we're, I suppose the real focus is trying to make sure that we have a healthy cow producing healthy bee stings with a, a normal calving so that it's so that, that the calf comes into the world as stress free as possible. Then we are hoping that it's going to have good quality bee stings, that the calf gets us, you know, in, in, in its best condition and keeping keeping um, the environment as hygienic as possible. So really, we're going to start off with the with the the pre-calving cow and what we can do to help here. So really there's five steps, five um, steps for a healthy cow and, and I'll go through each of them separately. But we're looking at, the, you know, target, having a cow at a target body condition score. We kind of spoke about that in the webinar before Christmas. Um, good nutrition, I know that that comes for the whole dry period, but especially in the period just before calving, it's very important because dry cow, um, their appetite is actually very much suppressed at, uh, and their intakes are reduced coming up to calving. They just don't have the drive to eat. So we need to we need them to eat so that they're in the best shape possible. Obviously, trying to prevent milk fever is going to is going to affect um, the, the, the health of our calf, because if you have milk fever at calving time, it's going to cause a prolonged calving and you will have a stress calf. A stress calf leads to um, more you know, Im immune compromise and it leads to more problems. Trace elements and dry cow minerals we're going to discuss. They're a little bit linked to the hypercalcemia cal situation, but also we're looking at the, you know, the iodine, the selenium and stuff like this, which can affect immunity and direct, have a direct effect on how the, the calf responds to a, a disease challenge. And then we're going to look at how we can, is there some way we can intervene to boost the immunity that we give to the calves? And look, really here we're talking a lot about vaccinations. Um, and we're not too late yet for, for in, certainly in some of the, the, the mid-season mid cows anyway. So first we'll talk at the target body condition score. Look, you know, we were talking there before Christmas about the about the body condition score. And the ideal one is what they're saying is really the score between 3 and 3.25. You know, you're talking about having a fit cow, not a fat cow. Um, if you have this target weight, you know, you're going to end up with less production disease. You're going to have less milk fever, less fatty acids, less fatty livers, less displaced abomasums, and less retained placenta. But it'll also, it'll also lead to less difficult and quicker calvings. So they're less stressful for the calf. So it's, it, that's why the body condition is important. You know, I know there's probably very little we can do about it now, but you know, if you're, you're late, you're late seeing calvers, maybe there is time to intervene in them and make sure that the thin cows are brought up to, to weight and the, and the, you know, the, the heavier cows don't get any heavier if or and maybe reduce the weight if possible. It is shown that thin cows were, are going to produce poor quality and less quantity colostrum. So it, it does have a, a, a direct bearing on the calf as, you know, in, in the quality of the immunity that we can um, pass on to the calf. And fat cows have been shown that they're going to have bigger calves. There's going to be more fat in the pelvis, so that that's going to lead to a, 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 a more difficult calving. And a, a, you know that the calf is going to be the, the calf is going to get squeezed coming out through that pelvis, so it's going to end up maybe having um, you know more difficulty breeding. Might might stay down longer. Mightn't drink milk as quick. So you know all these things uh, affect the calf health and and success of of your calving season. And obviously the milk fever issue again can slow down the calvings. 
So, you know, that's that's why the tar the, if you can get their cows at the, at the ideal body condition score, you're, you're getting rid of some of these problems. And the nutrition, like appetite vastly decreases um, in late pregnancy. Yet once they once the cow starts producing milk, you know, getting the, the colostrum ready, the, the, the energy demand is actually increasing. So it's it, it's even though, you know, we often are talking about the negative energy balance in cows maybe in the first 100 days after calving, that actually starts in the first 10 days before calving in, in some cows if they're not eating enough. So we really need to encourage the cows to eat, you know, as much as we can to get energy into them. So how we do that is by offering highly palatable food, you know, so it may be beet or maize or, or a nut, a dry cow nut, just to get, to get intake and energy into them. Um, it, it, you, you will see a, a response to that in your cows when, once they calve, they're going to be, you know, ready to go better. They're going to take to the to the lactating cow diet a lot better. But in the short term, it also means that they'll produce a better quality classroom for their calf. And, and you have to remember that, you know, um, antibodies require protein. So if you if you're feeding your cows on a poor quality um, silage with low protein, you're not going to get colostrum. So it's important that maybe if if your silage is tested and low in protein that you supplement it with a bit of soya, just to, just even just for classroom purposes, um, it is important. Okay, milk fever again, it, it can cause the problems with with calving. So how do we can we prevent it? We need to know what our silage is like. You need to get a, a an analysis of that. Um, in Ireland, there's a huge problem with high potassium, and that that cause that that. That has a huge effect on milk fever, high potassium silage, um, and, and magnesium. They, they 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 kind of interact, and you end up with more with more um, milk fever. So, like, how if you high potassium silage, what can you do? Well, you try and get low potassium silage. You try you try and you know dilute it down so that there's less potassium in the diet. Um, you know, you want a low. I might have that slightly um, mis. Put in, in in that slide, but I think you, you want the low um, dietary cation anion difference. So you can use anionic salt, salt in the diet to try and make that lower. If your if your silage is low enough in potassium, you can you can manage that. But definitely you need to ensure that there's good um, level of magnesium and phosphorus in your dry cow mineral. Like you really, you know, the cows really need a daily um, maybe magnesium. Of maybe you know at least 25 up to 40 grams of magnesium in, in, in every day in the dry cow mineral, and it's like it is important that we get that in, and we know that they're getting that consistently. So sometimes I'd be wondering about licks. Can we can we guarantee that they're each cow is taking the same amount daily? And that, that would be a one worry I'd have about licks. But it's some seem some seem to work well enough. The trace elements, um, again, it's linked to the dry cow minerals. Um, iodine, selenium, and vitamin E are the, the, the ones I'd really pick out for, for calf health and, and, and immunity. A low iodine can lead to, to stillbirth, so these cows that appear perfectly normal, but when they come out, they just have no life in them. They're, they, they, might, they might breathe, um, you know, take a few breaths and just never get going. Or you could end up with just these weak cows that take ages to get going. Um, so that can be a sign that it's an iodine issue. So um, so, like, it's, so it's important to know what's in the diet. It might even require, you know, your vet to take bloods to see whether your your cows are deficient in iodine. And certain parts of the country certainly have big iodine issues. Um, a low selenium and vitamin E that means that there's less antioxidants, so you're going to get a bit, you're going to get um, poor immune response. Um, so again, like in in the cow, you often see they get metritis, but you often mean that it means that the calf is also going to be poor at, at fighting off infections and maybe navel ills or joint joint ills stuff like that. So it's important that we we, we control that. Um, th these two need daily supplementation. So whether you use it, you can use it as dusting on top of the silage, or actually you can get them into in, into the water, but just um, in in. in, in you did in nets and you put them in change change it weekly and, and it works fine bolus is quite good um hard to know like the some of the boluses are, are are better at releasing the quantities that are needed and again the the mineral list, i just have that reservation whether we can be sure that all cows are getting enough you know, you're you're relying on intake um immunity boosting 
like really can we can we do anything to help like the colostrum really is the rocket fuel for for the calf like there's loads in it there's energy there's um there, there's fats there there's growth hormones there's everything in it plus the real important part is the antibodies um and can we boost the the, the antibodies yes we can like we can use the um you know there's there, there's a number of different vac vaccines out there that we can give to cows that m ensures that the the the, the colostrum is, is nearly turbocharged with antibodies so that the, so that if you can get that into the into the calf it, it, it'll make a big difference um rot rotavirus coronavirus and e coli are, are, are the most common ones that we see and they're, they're protected they're covered by the the most common vaccines in some areas you, we can see salmonella causing problems in calves um, down around here in here in Cork, we kind of probably see more abortion cause, caused by salmonella. So we vaccinate earlier. But if you're getting salmonella in calves, it's around now you need to be covering the the, the, the cows. Um, just thing to note about when you're vaccinating, they need to be you need to give time for the the reaction to occur so that the the antibodies will be high in the colostrum. So they must be at least three weeks from calving, but not further than three months away from calving so that's just it, 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 so that you're going to get the the best possible bang for for the, from the vaccination get highest antibodies in, in the colostrum and even though we, we know that it, the antibodies are absorbed for a limited length of time from the abomasum of the calf and they get absorbed into the bloodstream but it that's so it's critical we get that in the first kind of really six to twelve hours to get the the the, the the, the colostrum, but even after when the antibodies don't pass through the abomasum, they, they stay local in the gut and they can bind to any of the, the infectious organisms and protect the body there. So, it's, you know, feeding the vaccinated milk from, from cows for the, the first week after calving is still beneficial. And I just stuck in there at the end, IBR vaccination of cows. Um, IBR doesn't, isn't a particularly um, relevant for cows, but what happens is it, 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 it cows when they're under stress they shed it so calving is stressful so they'll be shedding it if they're not vaccinated at around calving time and it, you know when the, the cow, if the cow is licking the calf or around his head it's shedding ibr um it's shedding an ibr um, virus around the calf's nose and so obviously the calf will get infected with ibr so if we've been vaccinated we're going to reduce that as well so it's something to consider it's a, it would be a good time to to vaccinate so that really is, is how we try to make sure that the, the, the cow is in the, her best um, shape for calving and that she's producing good colostrum. We move on just to the facilities and what we need around calving time. Um, like the first thing we really do need good, you know, restraints and stuff to try and safely manage a, a, a cow. A lot of times now people are calving cows on their own. So something like the, 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 the picture there of that calving, calving co um, crush case setup is vital so you can self-locking you can you can manage it if we need an operation it's it's opening on the left hand side you know you can safely negotiate um with a cow there you, you know that those gates are, are, are very useful um, and i think vital now on, on any sort of busy farm um hygiene is crucial and everything to do around the calving the, the calving shed whether it be for yones or our scours or, 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 or any any diseases is really it's sh all those diseases that calf pick up come from the cow so if we can keep the calf away from uh, cow manure that, that we're really going to reduce the infection pressure around the calf so cleaning and disinfecting with appropriate um and or disinfectants you know there's some that are, are work better from uh, from a point of view of cryptosporidium or coccidiosis than others not not all are our um our farm disinfectants are, are as good as each other so you just want to watch it yeah and plenty clean straw you like after if you're using individual calving boxes a coat of clean straw after every cow is certainly warranted and if it's in a, in a bigger pen look it just needs to be bettered frequently you should you sh there's a, an awful lot of um of bugs around calving calving houses and we try to try, try and um you know put some sort of barrier between the calf and 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 the bugs if at all possible the equipment again we need a functioning calving jack you often go out to a call where the the calving jack is seized up 
just make you know just this time of year before you get right to the into it, make sure that your cabin jack is working. Um, it's obviously it's clean. You have ropes, lubricant, gloves, and warm water. Just it makes the job a little bit a, a bit easier to go. Um, the navel spray. Look, there's plenty of navel sprays on the market. I find the chlorhexidine is best, and just it's vital to get to have. You know, get a new batch of that at the start of the season. I don't know how how well those disinfectants last over the you know over uh, you know if they're open for twelve months or so. Um, so maybe get a new one and just make sure when when you are using it that you really get inside the navel as a, a, you know it is kind of like a, a tube so to get the outside and the inside and it really just protects the 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 the, the navel from um, bugs traveling up. In, up into the into the abdominal calf. Look, respiratory stimulants. There's numerous tubes or injections. Um, they certainly work. They don't. They're not needed in every case. I find a lot of time the cold water in the year is 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 good enough to give a kind of a cold shock to the calf and you know stimulates a a, a big deep breath and you know it, it's good when the calf hits the ground. And also you, you need to have a stomach tube ready. Just you know if you have a calf that isn't inclined to suck, at least you can get the claustrum into them fairly quickly. So, you know, and obviously, again, hygiene in your stomach, too, is, is, is very vital. The intervention in calving time. Look, the big thing is it's important to know what you can do with knowing when to stop then as well, and maybe to call for the likes of me or uh, to come out and give you a hand. Look, the big thing is, you know, give them time. You know, if you, once you notice the, a cow sick, she should have produced the water bag by, by six hours. And once you see that, the water bag, you, you're, should, she should be calved within two hours. Uh, I see your own place that isn't used all the time. We need to be using the gloves and the lube just to try and keep the infection away. Like our hands aren't clean. And if we bring, you know, bringing that in around the cast moat at such a vulnerable stage, we can actually cause disease as well. So the, the gloves and the lube are important. Obviously, we all know the, the three to one rule, three liters. I would say if you have a bigger calf, you could give more than three liters. Smaller calf, maybe a, 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 a Maybe Jersey cross calf could, could take less. Um, remember, the tr like in, in the dairy breeds, that you that you need three liters to get enough antibodies in. Um, need to get it within two hours, ideally, because from the moment the calf is born, the gut, the the gut begins to to close down towards these antibodies. So you, at, at, when they're born, they're quite leaky, and the antibodies can be absorbed into the bloodstream quite quickly. So the sooner she gets the feed, the more the bigger percentage of the antibodies will be absorbed into the bloodstream, and you're going to have a better immunity in the calf. And the last thing, colostrum is the cow's first milking. But if that cow is leaking before calving, she's already lost her first milking. So you know, just be aware of that her quality won't be as good. Um, like sometimes I, you know, if you have a cow that is absolutely bursting before calving, you it's okay to milk her before she calves and store the colostrum, freeze it. And, and have it for when when the calf is born. It could be two or three days later. But it, it, the, if you let the the the, the milk um, leak out or the colostrum leak out, the quality reduces. You can also get your vet just to to help you to measure the the success of, the, of this. You can measure the colostrum quali quality itself, or you can measure the amount of antibodies that are absorbed using a simple blood test. On a calf, uh, it can be done there and then with a with, with a refractometer. So sometimes we, we go in and we do maybe ten calves just to see, you know, within the first week of life, just to see how much um, colostrum they've got and is, is the management okay on farm. And you know, if you get two of them that are low, you know you're in trouble. to think some things are are are, are slipping in the in the way that things are managed. Um, ensuring calf health. Look. It's again like if you ha you have a healthy calf on the ground, so you need to keep the, um, the the infections and the bugs away from them. So you need to keep the calf shed and the feeding utensils clean using the appropriate disinfectants. Again, depending what you're disinfecting, you, you know, you, you know, for cryptosporidium, steaming seems to be very effective, or maybe even using some hydrogen peroxide is quite good. And the the the, the contact time is vital as well. So if you're like if you're cleaning out a, a calf shed, it is great to have it done in advance, leave plenty of contact time and disinfectant and allow the, the, the shed to dry naturally. You get a better kill that way. Um, obviously, the pins need to be clean, draft free, very important. A draft is, is very, very damaging to calf, it cools them down. 
way too much and they end up expending more energy on keeping warm than actually growing. A good aid to that for the last number of years is, is a calf jackets. I find them very successful. Our use maybe of something like stock board just to sheet down the gates around the pens is quite effective cutting down the, the, the drafts as well. Good drainage in, in the in the calf pens is also vital. Um, especially around where they're where they're where they're drinking. They're gonna do most of their 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 peeing and, and shitting around where they drink. So if you can keep that area clear, I often say it's just have that on concrete and with no straw so that you can you can sweep that away once a day maybe even throw a bit of lime down just to kill the bugs but it's it's that wet areas is where you know you'd like your, your cryptos and your coccidiosis really um take hold and you, you know if they're standing in a, in a dirty area and then they, they walk up onto the straw they're, they're contaminating the straw as well um an isolation pen is a thing that i don't think you know a lot of people have like if you have a sick calf he should really be pulled out as quick as possible just so that he's not spreading disease onto the healthy calves in the same batch um it makes sense like if you have a, if you have a calf with, with diarrhea he's going to produce vast quantities of bu bugs and if he's in the same pen with other calves you're you're you're, you're going to have an issue same with a pneumonia case ideally put him pull him out into a nice warm pen maybe with a, a red lamp or something to keep him warm and plenty straw and you nurse them back to health. Um, group calves according to age, this is another thing that can happen. And, you know, the older the calf, the better his immune system is, so he can tolerate uh, um, infections, but he could actually be a source of infections to younger calves. So what he can tolerate, a younger calf can. So by mixing the age of the calves, you're exposing the younger calves to more infections. So it's better to, to you know, have a, nearly an all in, all out system that's that, you know that you don't mix the ages of the calves um, and feeding the calf again the first feed is from the mother especially if you're worried about yone is it, it should all, only be from the mother's milk um if it's if yone is in your herd it's it's, it's kind of difficult given the first couple of feeds and maybe onto milk a good quality milk replacer is the way to go for your heifer calves um the aim is to get them up to three liters of milk or milk replacer twice a day um they say that's the best. That's the the best um, inclusion rate of, of you know you're, you're you're talking about roughly 15% of body weight, um, and they'll grow at, at their best if they get three days morning and evening, um, and it still it still allows them to have an appetite to 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 eat some of the creep, which is vital for developing the rumen later on. Um, the thing I'm seeing with a lot of the, the um, maybe you know maybe once a day f feeding is over hunger and you end up getting calves that should drink too fast and they can get get bloat or or something like this and our digestive problems cause causing scour outbreaks in, in calves you you need to be very regular you know if you feed them more twice a day feed them at the same times don't be letting it you know your gap your gaps change um or it could end up with problems using a good quality milk replacer with milk protein you know based on milk protein Vegetable proteins aren't digestible by cows, so if there's too much vegetable protein in that, you're, you're not going to get um, good absorption or growth rates. I, I find you get what you pay for in some of these, so use a good quality one, especially for your, your heifer cows, but they're, they're the future you're heard. Using acidifiers in the milk is very good, and gut health promoters, like there's products they're containing, Seaguard seems to fight off some of these infections as well, and, 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 and allows the calf to you know, to, to take in a good lot of milk as well. So they, they're all all aids here. And if you have a, a problem with pneumonia, I certainly would consider using the intranasal vaccines. Um, that can be done in the first week of life. It makes a huge difference. It gives them immunity for, for the first 12 weeks. And really at that stage, they're nearly, considered, they're nearly ready to go outside. So you, you really are having protected from pneumonia. So in the first, you know, from seven to 10 days on, you can be giving them that vaccine if needs be. Um, I just said, said I'd do a quick little bit on calf scour because it's a, it's a predominant um, disease and killer of calves in the first couple of weeks. Um, like I think in the in the region of veterinary labs, they're saying I think nearly two thirds of the calves that, are, that end up going to region lab for post mortem, they find that they don't have enough bee stings or clostrum in their system. They don't have enough immunity. So look, that just reinforces why we're we push the clostrum message. But it, it, the task are like huge losses in the first two or three weeks of life. The main bugs are the E. coli, Rota, Corona, and the Crypto. We can vaccinate against first three there. 
Um, the B coli is normally in the first couple of days. Um, the, the rota in rota is, in, you know, maybe two, three, four days. Um, crypto kind of creeps in five, seven, seven days. You're talking coccidiosis can be later. Some of that could probably can, can, can come in early enough as well, but not, you know, maybe in the first week or ten days. But coccidiosis really isn't cause, going to cause you a problem for about three to four weeks after being born. Um, in, in, in the early cat, it, it's, it, it's the rotavirus and the, and the crypto that is most common. Um, coronavirus isn't isolated that, that often. I know we've, we're talking about corona a lot at the moment, but in, in the bovine coronavirus, it's hard to isolate it and might be underreported. Um, but it, it does seem to worsen the problem when it's there. You, we can test these a lot of veterinary practice now can you know they have um either calf size test or or, or, or they can test the, the 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 sample and get a, a very quick answer and find out what is the bug on your farm they can do that within you know in the in space of a few minutes to an hour if um depending on what test they're using but so it's, it's very useful to get take samples and find out what you're dealing with and you know what you need to do like if you management of crypto is a lot different to the management of rota um, well, at least you have you you have prevention options if nothing else. When you do get a, a sick calf, you isolate them into your into your, your your isolation pen. The last few years, we certainly have gone uh, have changed tack, and we certainly want the calf to be nourished while we're treating. So we don't ever take them off milk anymore. We we feed them twice a day as normal if they take it, but adding electrolytes, um, either using the electrolytes you can add to the milk. But also giving extra feeds of electrolytes during the day, at least two extra feeds, maybe three extra feeds, will do in a lot of cases. Obviously, TLC is important for these guys. They're feeling fairly shook and cold, so keep them warm. Um, good um, straw bed and a jacket. I think it does it, it makes a big difference, and maybe a red lamp if needed. Most cases don't require antibiotics for for cask or. You do get some cases that do, and, and it's sometimes when they get so so stressed that they're down, their immune system is is failing at that stage, so they do need an antibiotic just to prevent other diseases. Um, so you, you, you go, you, that's what you you, you end up um, having to give an antibiotic. But hopefully, or if you get them early enough, oral um, electrolytes will, will work. Um, but if you get to the stage where this calf here is, he's down, his his eye is is sunken, um, he's probably he's not able to stand or very wobbly if he is standing. You end up having to give him calling a vet and giving a drip. If crypto is isolated, you're really looking at a different strategy. Basically, you end up trying to give um, a preventative to to to, to all the in contact in contact calves or any every calf that's born from there on, and you know treating for the first. Seven days of life with, with um, the halicures or, 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 or products like that, just try and reduce the amount of shedding and the the, the infectious load inside the caches. That's the, that's the best preventative in those. So I think that is basically my my, my summary. So basically, you keep, if you can have a healthy healthy cow, properly managed in clean environment and you know good quality caches. And good cluster management, you you get rid of an awful lot of your problems. You prevent a lot of problems. So, if I, I'll answer questions after when after one has finished his his review. But thanks for listening anyway. If you are having any connection issues, or if you're losing sound or or signal at all, there is a reconnect option there. Um, so I think it's, there's a button there that says reconnect at the bottom of your screen. So if you want to just try that, if you are having any issues, it should reconnect you, and the signal should hopefully be an awful lot better for you. So just try that if you're in trouble. And um, look, obviously, there will be a full replay um, emailed to everybody that, that, that's registered for the webinar as well. So if you've missed any of it, you'll be able to watch everything that Kevin has discussed back um, tomorrow when we send that email. But no, thanks a million for that, Kevin. Like I said, we've, right. we've plenty of questions there um, that I'll get to you in, in a couple of minutes' time. Um, what I'm going to do now for the for the next couple of minutes, everyone, is I'm just going to, I suppose, shift the focus a little bit from from the advice piece from Kevin to actually um, moving into more of an advice piece in terms of using Herdwatch and how Herdwatch can really help you in terms of you know the, the registration of the calf and removing the paperwork side of, of this on your farm. So um, I'm just going to, if you give us a second, um, bring Herdwatch up on the screen first of all. So 
I know that um, everybody that's connected this evening is, is very familiar with this. This is our home screen. So if you're if you're new to Herdwatch or if you've maybe never never registered a calf before, um, just going to spend a couple of minutes and showing you how easy and how quick it actually is to do this. So um, obviously from the home screen, you have your orange plus button here in the bottom right hand corner. So this is your start point for your calf registration or for essentially any task or record that you want to put into the Herdwatch app. So when you click on your orange plus button, you're going to get all your options of what you want to record. And in the top left corner, you'll always have the calf option there. So you just click on your orange plus button and then click on calf. And this allows you to create a brand new calf. Very, very straightforward from here. And um, the first thing you're going to have to select is the gender of your calf. So was it a bull calf or was it a heifer calf? So um, I have a couple of calves that we need, we need to get registered here. And I can see that the first one is actually a male calf. So I'm just going to select male calf here. Um, now you're within the calf registration um, here. So it, there's just a couple of things that you need to obviously enter before you can save and submit that registration to uh, Ag Food if you're based in Ireland or BCMS in the UK or obviously in, in Northern Ireland. So uh, the first thing that the app is going to ask you for is the actual um, the end of the calf's tag. So a little top tip or a little quick win that we have here, especially if, if, if your tags have the barcodes on it uh, you can and you're using your phone, you can actually use the scan tag option here, which will open the camera on your phone. Just point it at the barcode on your tag. It's going to read that for you. And it's going to put in the tag number of the calf automatically, which saves you having to type it in and obviously cuts down on potential mistakes with, with, with check digits or with, with the calf uh, tag itself. So if you have that option, do try and use it. But if not, you can still just type in uh, the couple of digits of the calf's tag really, really easily. So for this one, I have the tag here, uh, 71492. You'll see here that today's day has been entered in. So if the calf was born today, you can leave it alone. Or if it is a couple of days old, you can obviously move the date back to you know, whenever the calf um, was actually born. If you're based in Ireland, uh, obviously calving difficulty is a requirement of your calf registration. For those of you tuned in from the UK, it is there as an optional feature and in Northern Ireland as well. Uh, it's a little bit further down the list, but if you're in based in Ireland, obviously you do have to uh, specify what the, the calving difficulty was. So Kevin kind of went uh, or touched on it within his presentation there. So hopefully generally it's going to be normal calving, but if you've had the vet out, you can go to veterinary assistance or if you've had a difficult, difficult calving with the cow, you can obviously mark that as part of the registration just going to select normal calving here and another little i suppose a new feature that we've added recently to the app is the ability to um, take an image of your animals so that obviously counts for your calves but any other animals in your herd so if you have pedigree animals or bulls that you, you know you'd like to have a picture of you can add that image to any of your animals in the herd so you just click on the add image icon it'll open up your camera and allow you to select um, or take a picture of that animal and save it onto your profile the next part of your registration at that point then is selecting your, your, your dam, your cow, and then your sire for your calf. And you're almost there at that point then. So for this particular cow, um, I know that uh, the, or sorry, for this particular calf, I think we had 1194 is what I, I wrote down for this particular uh, calf. Now what you'll notice here as well is when I selected the, the cow, the, the sire came in here automatically for me. So what that means is I've, I've obviously recorded my breeding events in Herdwatch. Uh, my serves and scan results have went in there. Um, on, our, on our farm, we use all, we, we have a stock bull, so everything is off of him anyway. But um, I, I, it just means if I've recorded the serve, your sire is there, it's something you don't need to enter or even think about at registration time. So um, a little tip that we have for our Irish farmers there again is, you know, if you're a suckler or dairy farmer, you can connect your, your Herdwatch account to ICBF. And if you've had a technician on the farm, it's going to bring in all those records for you automatically. So all your, your AI dates uh, from your technician and his handheld will, will sync into Herdwatch directly from ICBF. While I'm talking about little tips, I suppose another one for our Irish farmers again as well is if you are a suckler farmer, Herdwatch does allow you to enter the calf size and vigor at registration time. Um, so it saves you a job if you're in the beef data genetics program. Um, you don't have to um, fill out the paperwork for, for the calf size and vigor anymore. You can just select it here at registration time. You can put in your average size and, and whatever your, the vigor is for your calf. And you do have lots of other optional features here. So if you're a pedigree um, farmer, you can enter your pedigree name uh, in Ireland and in the UK and in, in Northern Ireland. Uh, or if the calf, you know, did happen to be a stillborn calf or was uh, the cow aborted, you can select that here if applicable uh, as part of the registration for you. So other than that, I have everything that I need for this particular calf entered. So I can just save it at that point. And the app just asked me, do I want to send this registration 
to the department straight away. So I have two options. I can obviously do that if I like, and it will register straight away. If if you don't, some dairy farmers or some sucker farmers may want to let the, the, the calves build up and send them all off in one go, which I will show in a second. But that will obviously mean you'll get your passports or your blue cards back there all in one go. So if you want, you can select the not now, add more calves, and then send them all off together. Uh, for this particular one, I just... I will send this one off. It, you will be prompted for your herd watch pin uh, just on the first calf. And once you enter that, click continue. And it's communicating. And you can see there, within a couple of seconds, I've got the success message. Registration has been, uh, has been accepted and the documentation, are, as in the passport, is going to be sent out in the next couple of days. You can see that there. So really, really straightforward, really easy. This can obviously be done um, as you tag the calf when you're down you know, in, on the farm. As things are happening, you, you stick the tag on the calf, you can pull out your phone there and then, and you can pop in those details and send that off to the department um, as it happens. The other thing I did want to show everybody this evening is I did mention it at the start of the webinar. It's, um, it's a new feature we've added as part of our complete plan, which is a uh, batch or bulk calf registration. So uh, the process of creating the calves doesn't change at all, but it just means if you don't decide to register them straight away, when you go back to the calves, you can register them all on the spot with one click of a button. So the process to do this is obviously the very same and I still need to create my calf. So it's my orange plus button and I can select a calf. And this time I'm gonna go with a heifer calf. And the next one in the sequence for ourselves was 81493. Calf was born on Friday. So I can just change the date back to the 15th. And it's the same process as I just went through a couple of seconds ago. I just select my, my calf in difficulty um, if you're in Ireland. Next thing, I just to select my cow. So I know that this one was out of 11.30. And you can see that my bull has obviously popped in here again for me. And as I said, if you are a suckler farmer, you can select your, your size and vigor on your calves as well. Um, I'm just going to save this particular calf now. But this time, instead of sending it straight off to the department, I'm going to select not now. So it saves the calf, but it's not the calf is not actually registered. But it is loaded into the app for you, and it's ready to be registered whenever you like. So if you wanted to leave it for a couple of days, where does the calf be? It's just in your compliance area here on the home screen. So if you click into compliance, calves to register, that calf is there. And you can obviously use the batch registration if you have multiple calves or if it's just the one, you can send it off. So I do have two other calves that I want to create here. So I'm going to create them and send them all off as well as a batch registration. So I have two more heifer calves to go here. So I have uh, 91494 this time. was born on Saturday. Same normal calving and the dam for this particular calf. So you can kind of see the process once you've done it once or twice it's really straightforward really quick and easy so you're, you're looking at 20 to 30 seconds you know to get your calf registered. You can click save and not now and that's that calf created um, and it's not registered, but I'm going to send them all off together when, when, when I'm happy that the four or five calves are there and ready to go. I have one more calf to go, so I just plus button, new calf, female, another heifer calf again, and her number is 11425. And that cow, particular cow calved on Sunday, just gone. Normal calving again, and I think it was 2677. So you can see when you're within the dam list, you don't have to scroll down to find a cow. You can just use the search feature at the top, pop in the last couple of digits of our tag number, and that will find it for you. And you can just select a cow, and you can see that our stock bull has been added there again automatically. Another job I don't have to do. I can just save, not now. So I've all my, my calves created now. So this could be, you know, if you're, if you're on the farm, this could happen over the course of a week or 10 days. And um, so it could build to 10 or 20 calves if you, you know, depending on, on the size of your farm. And they will all live in here in your compliance and calves to register. You can see that I have three calves here now ready to go. And instead of having to click on them one by one, I can just use the batch registration. So when I click on batch registration, I can send one or two or all of the calves if I like. So I'm just going to select them all here and I'm just going to click save. And that will actually just send off your registration for you there. Now, as I said, if you want to do it individually, you can click on the calf, as I done this a couple of seconds ago, and it will let that calf through. 
So it's as simple as that. It, it, you have both options there. You can do your, your single calf registration. You can do your bulk calf registration. It should really help you to cut down um, on the amount of time it, ta it takes you to do the, that side of the, the, the registrations, I suppose, in the spring. When time is really, you know, sh in short demand and short supply, I suppose, um, when you're actually busy helping cows and calving cows. So this is where Herdwatch will, will really come in and make your life an awful lot easier, save you a lot of time, and give you that peace of mind that you know your calves are registered, your passports are, are, are in the post and on the way. Um, so that's that's pretty much it for me in terms of, of the demoing. Uh, I do want to just move on at this point, um, Kevin, because there has been loads of questions in for you, you know, and there's a couple for myself as well. So uh, I'm just going to now kick off with the questions. Um, the first one that came in a couple of minutes ago for yourself, Kevin, was from Martin. Um, Martin was asking, what were Kevin's thoughts on the use of ready-made bee stings for a newborn calf? Um, Martin says it's not it's not always easy to get milk from a suckler, but I like to be, to be sure the calf get, has something when she hits the ground. Yeah, look, the, the, like everything, there's different qualities. Um, you probably get what you pay for. Again, the the, the dear ones are going to have uh, are going to be better quality. There, there's nothing really as good as, as the as the real thing. But if you get the good quality um, artificial ones, that they're, they're, they are of use. But I wouldn't go for um, you know something that's, that's, that's too cheap. It's, it could cost you twenty euros to get it in. There is also um, a product there you can give orally to to cows. Say if you're in the middle of a, a rotavirus outbreak, there's a product you can get to give orally to the calf as they hit the ground. That's more or less is the same as as vaccinating the the mother. So all these products are there i suppose we're not really meant to be promoting any product on this webinar over over another but yeah there is definitely artificial classroom that is of use but you know search for the best quality one really okay thanks a million kevin uh hopefully that helps martin uh with your question uh martin did actually have a second question there as well um kevin i uh, meant to ask you at the start so uh he just also asked what's the best vaccination i suppose he's looking for advice there again to give to the cow pre-calving look there, there's two real uh, there's the two main ones that are uh, there's a bovigen and the rotavac they both are really um we find them both very good um i must say that, that, that but it, what, what it really is, is it's boosting the, the quality of the, of the bee sting. so if you don't have good cluster management you may as well not vaccinate them so it's that that's where all the immunity is coming from so if you use either of those and you use them in the in, in the right time frame you're really getting a good quality bee stings or colostrum, and if you, you that, that's where all the all the goodness comes from. So, but yeah, I I, I find both those that I named are are very good. I don't have much experience with any of the rest of them, and that's not saying they're they're not any good. They're just the two I'm familiar with. Okay, thanks for that, Kevin. Uh, question is coming from John here. Um, John is saying mo most years uh, some of the calves are suffering with crypto. Um, what are the best preventions and treatments for this? I know you covered some of it on your on your slides, but if you wanted to just maybe yeah, look, quick recap oh, again. yeah, look, hygiene is is the number one. They're not born with crypto. A lot of it is coming from from, from the adult animals. So try and keep them as clean, or or you know even if you had a clean pen for each each calf, you won't get crypto. But it's it's when they start mixing and the the, the older calves are are little crypto crypto factories. So. When you have a crypto problem, you really the best way of going about it is okay. Obviously, the disinfectant and using the proper disinfecting of the calf pens that helps. Like steam steam cleaning the 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 the, the pens, you know, in the summertime is is the best. You're probably gone. Well, you probably could steam clean now because you still you you still clean. Um, but the longer you, the longer they're left dry and idle, the, the the better kill you get. The the bug dries out. But um. If you're in the middle of the, of the problem with crypto problem, the best way you can you can um, get over it is to give the, the there's two there's a few proprietary problems. The Halicure is one that you have to give kind of every day for seven days in a row to a newborn calf, and that really kind of breaks the the chain, gets rid of the the um, the infection pressure. But you have to do it to every calf that's born after your 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 positive cases, um, and that's the best. It's a bit of a pain, but when you have a lot of crypto, I think it's it's easier to give them the the, the, the seven mils of of the product than having to give them electrolytes three or four times a day and get up in the middle of the night and have dead calves. So that's where you're looking at. Okay. Hygiene is number one. Okay, 
so there you have it john um it, it, a part of his question was actually on the on the steam cleaning as well so that's something you would obviously recommend there as well. yeah it certainly is it, it seems to 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 to, to um to destroy the, the, the crypto bug. And as I say, drying out then after, like if you steam clean it, dry them out, make sure that the pen is steam, then put on the disinfectant, you really are, you'll kill everything. But it, it survives in cracks. So the, the quality of your wall surface and your floor surface is going to, like if, you're, if, you, if your calf pens have, have stone walls, you're going to find it very hard to keep it, to, to get it as clean as maybe someone that is lined with stock board or, 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 or something like that. Okay, thanks Kevin again. So the next question is coming from Mark. Um, Mark's just, just asking um, you have to go back to the calf jackets uh, that you mentioned earlier, Kevin. So um, Mark's just looking for some, some advice on how long he, you should keep them on um, and what temperature in the shed, or sorry, what temperature in shed should the shed be before you take them off? Well, what they say is that a calf, if a calf's at 15 degrees, you know, that's the environment temperature. If it's 15 degrees, anything, that anything below that the calf is using up some of the, the feed is taking to just to keep warm so up until 15 degrees you probably you, you could justify leaving it on now i find you don't need to leave it on that long but certainly this time of year for for um all january all february you're going you're, you're rarely going to be at that temperature so if you, you can leave the jackets on um like there's some tries to say that you know in healthy calves fed the same diet one wearing a jacket one not not wearing a jacket you know the, the one not wearing a jacket will, 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 can can um, achieve a weight gain of 700 grams per day, while the one with the jacket on the same diet might go 150, 200 grams extra just from wearing the jacket. So that depends on the in the environmental temperatures. But like they're they're talking about anything under 15 degrees is 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 is, is too cold for for optimal performance in a calf. Fair enough. Thanks again, Kevin. So next question is from Anne. Um, Anne has asked, um, are calf saver 25 ml bottles worth giving to newborn calves to get them up and running? Look, like all of these stimulants, they have stuff in them that I'm not 100% sure what's in, in, in the calf saver, but they, normally they have caffeine and um, respiratory stimulants in them. There are no harm. There's, there, there's numerous products on the market um, that, that act as stimulants, but you know, Again, whether whether one is better than the other is hard to know. We, we we have injectables that seem to work a little bit better than than the um th than some of the oral ones, but certainly th 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 they seem to give them a little bit of of vigor without a doubt. Um, so it, I think it's it, it, there's certainly no harm. Okay, super stuff again, Kevin. Thanks. Um, John John has asked again: Is colostrum powder any use? Same answer, really. But the quality, of the, the, like, the, the, you can't beat the real thing. But if you're if you're stuck, you're stuck. So you have to try and get it somewhere. So that's, yeah, the, the, yeah. that's the next best. Yeah, I think you covered that already. In fairness to you, Kevin. And um, so the next question has come from from Robert. I think Robert's based in in Northern Ireland. Um, it could be for me actually. Uh, in Northern Ireland, we don't get a blue card. We get an email of confirmation. Um, oh yeah, sorry about that, um, Robert. That's correct. So up north. It's not the same process as here down south in Ireland. You know, when they register the calf, they'll obviously get their, their blue passport or the blue card out in the post, whereas I think in, in, in NI, they get their email confirmation straight away. Um, so on to the next one from Michael. Um, Michael's asking, uh, Kevin, is rock salt um, lick good for dairy cows? It is. Look, it, there, there, there certainly is good reports. Um, again, I my only issue with, with, with licks is I, I'm not 100% sure of intake so you you don't have any great control of what's going on are you sure that all cows are taking it at the same rate are they getting enough um no they do seem to be the the, the rock salt or the himalayan salt they do seem to like it so they, they probably are getting good results um but again it's it's just hard to prove what they're getting that's my only concern yep and the next one is another one for your very popular man this evening um kevin so Niall is asking how effect, how effective is the vaccine against scour? Again, very good if you use it the right way. Um, so if you use it in the, the three, not closer than three three weeks from calving, and you know, and and they have to be within three months of, of calving. So that's that's the, the, the ideal time. And again, feeding feeding it the, the the first milk is is vital into the calf, but continuous feeding of it, 
for the first week of life, even the transition milk is going to be benefit the, 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 the calves because it stays in the gut. The antibodies stay in the gut. Even the ones that aren't absorbed into the calf system, they stay in the gut and bind to any of the infectious organisms like the rotors or the E. coli uh, or the coronaviruses. So you, you get extended cover that way. So they are actually quite good. Um, again, like any vaccine, if the infection pressure is unbelievably high, you're, they'll be overcome. But if you have a fair, fairly good um, conditions in your calf shed and you're, you're feeding the, 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 the milk off from vaccinated cows in the right way, you should, you should have a good success from those. Now, it doesn't have any effect on crypto. So if you have a crypto problem, you need a, a different solution. Uh, next question is from William. Uh, William is asking, Kevin, is uh, is iodine poor uh, an iodine poor worthwhile investment uh, prior to calving? Again, it depends on your situation. If you have like some areas of the country, you don't need. There's no iodine deficiency there, um, so you, you 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 possibly need to get maybe blood taken from the vet. Or if, if you know there's historic issues with iodine, yes, treatment is is worth doing it. You can. There's numerous ways of giving the iodine. You can give them the boluses. You can give it in the water. You can paint it onto their flank or just pour on, and you just have to follow what what's on the on, on the particular preparation you have. Um, some of the, some of them you have to do weekly. Um, the the iodine in the water it has to be in the water daily. Um, the bolus is then obviously they, they, they say there's up to just just three months activity in in, in those bolus. So it, it depends what we use. But certainly, if you have an iodine problem, whatever way you can get the iodine in is is good. Okay. Um, next one is in from Patrick. He's looking for a little bit of advice off you here, Kevin. Uh, Patrick is a suckler farmer himself, um, mm. but he said he's getting colostrum from uh, a dairy farmer to use when doubtful. So, would you advise for or against this? Oh, I think it, I, I think it's it's no harm at all to get it. Um, just know the, your dairy farmer's Yoni status is doing is is the risk on a on a biosecurity side of it, and the other side is um, if it's frozen colostrum. Just the thawing of it is quite important that you do it properly. You can put it into boiling water. You kind of, if you can only put it into water that you can you can tolerate with your hand yourself. You know, if it's if it's hotter than that, it'll actually cook the the colostrum and and, and um, damage the antibodies. So if you're if you're thawing frozen colostrum, the rule of thumb is stick your your hand into the hot water first. And if you if your hand can stay in there comfortably, that that's the, the water you need to. To toss, so it'll take time to toss. That's the only thing. Okay, so not to rush the if you are using frozen stuff, mm. not, to, not to rush the deal the toss. Exactly. Thanks, Kevin. Um, next one is from Florence. Um, um, they have a dairy herd, that I, but they're they're a summer calving uh, herd, Kevin. So, um, they're starting to make plans for drying off now. Um, Florence is saying the cows will spend a dry period up until calving on permanent grass um, pastures uh, and hay. Any tips for managing? This dry period at grass. Look, you know, it, 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 a lot of it is going to be done by eye. You know, you see your body condition score is is good. Like without knowing the exact what their intakes are, it's going to be hard to, to, to give advice. But um, one thing about grass, especially close to the to the calving um, time, grass is high in calcium, and if you get too much calcium before the calf, you're going to end up with more milk fevers. So. Time to take the the, the, the grass out the grass out of the diet, um, for maybe two or three weeks before calving would be better, and um, that is one thing. Obviously, then not just monitor the, the body condition scores is, is another. Like if they're on poor quality quality grass outside, it's like there's a lot of challenges with the cold weather. They're using up a lot of energy, um, maybe they they might need supplement. You know, you just have to you just have to monitor yourself. Every situation will be different. You know. Fair enough. Um, we're nearly there, I think, um, Kevin. Only a couple left. So this this one is is question is coming from Eddie. Um, Eddie has just asked if it's possible in beef cows uh, that the size at birth can be affected by a lack of minerals in the cow pre calving. Size? I don't think the size would, would make a huge difference. Or sorry, minerals would make a huge difference to the size of the calf. Um, like that would really be down to you know the the intakes and the, before calving. Um, you know the quality of protein that they're getting is is a big thing in in in, in calves. Um, the minerals shouldn't make a huge difference to the to the to the, to the size of the calf. What it does make a difference is to maybe to the vigor of the calf. So 
having a good mineral um, mineral intake will, will help your cows be, be more vigorous. Brilliant. Um, just to give give us a break for the questions for a second, uh, I've been All asked right. to give a, sh a shout out to Mason. Um, I think Mason is watching with Martin there this evening. Um, getting he's really enjoying your presentation. Mason is seven, and he said he can't wait for calving season, Kevin. And yeah, he's really a bad Christmas. Yeah, yeah, he's you're, you could be on your own there, Mason. Um, yeah. But um, no, hope you're enjoying the, the webinar so far, Mason. Um, uh, just a little shift. There's a, there's been a question from Nullig, um, just in relation to Herdwatch itself. Uh, Nullig has asked uh, Owen if given more than one remedy at a time to a cow, how can you group them so that, or sorry, to cows, how can you group them so that you don't have to add one remedy and select the animals? Um, okay, I, I think I know what you're asking here, Nullig. So, uh, say for argument's sake, if you were maybe drying off your cows where they're getting uh, maybe a dry cow tube and a sealer uh, to the same group of animals. There is a, a, a little trick or a little, I suppose a top tip within herd watch uh, to allow you to make, make that process a little bit easier. So um, if you've recorded your first treatment, no look, uh, so say you've you've selected the first medicine, uh, you've selected your group of animals. I, I, I'll just show you really quickly here. So if I come into compliance and then I can click on my plus button, I can select a cattle treatment. You can pick any any of your medicines here. Um, you know, I just pick penstrip just to, just to, to to give an example. Um, select to administer the medicine. So in this instance, I'm going to pick myself. So this is our first treatment here, no look. Uh, so I'll just save this really quickly. So when you click next, it brings you into your herd list where you can select the animal or group of animals that have actually been treated or dosed or vaccinated or dried off or tubed, um, as the case may be. You can pop into your groups, and if I go to you know, born here, and I can just select, say, three or four of these animals and just save it. Once that first treatment has been saved, now look, uh, for argument's sake, if this had been uh, a tube and then into a sealer, instead of having to start from scratch, I can just now go plus button and select the four animals here. So this is a key little step here, is if you click on this, select the four animals, you can then select another cattle treatment. And if you had given your tubes and now you're given your sealer, you can just select your sealer here, administered by select yourself again and when you select next here those four animals are already selected for you now look so it, it means you don't have to go and search and, and find those four or 10 or 20 animals or what it may be uh, again and you can just save that second treatment then so it's done really quickly really really easy so um i hope that helps um and shows you and i suppose answers the question that you had there um so uh, oh actually sorry i actually wasn't sharing here so let me actually um just go through that again really really quickly apologies lads and um, so as i was saying no look now the herd watch is up i'll show you how it's done apologies so from your home screen plus button cattle treatment pick whatever medicine it is that you want to use so if it, as i said a second ago if it was tubes select your tubes select to administer the tubes myself here then i'm going to select next and what i did a second ago no look was i i just selected groups Find a group of animals that you wanted to, to actually treat. And you can you can obviously select them all or just select the three or four and save. And that's my first treatment saved. What I do here then to give them the second medicine or the, or the sealer or whatever uh, the second remedy is, I can just go plus. And the key step here is up here in the top corner, select four animals from, from this record. And I can then just select my second cattle treatment. Pick the next medicine that you've given them. Select. Who gave the medicine next and you'll see here that at the bottom is telling me four animals have been selected so those four animals are already selected i don't have to go and find them again and i can just resave that again so that's that's the two different medicines administered to those animals very very quickly Um i think that's it and um, yeah no sorry there was one last question here for you um kevin i, I, yep. I might just throw you back up here for a second uh, last question in the night is has come in from shane uh, he's just said uh, highway four milk fever cases out of 30 cows so far this year never had a problem with it before this year um, um and had links since housed uh at what stage is it best to do things to prevent more cases happening kevin well probably what you need to do is just uh you know you probably like if you got your vet out maybe to take um blood samples from a few cows before and a few cows after and you just have a general run i.e they'll, they'll check maybe for um calcium magnesium phosphorus and maybe for um you know energy but you know uh, 
NIFAs or ketones, they'll, ch they'll check for that. Um, that'll give you an idea of what's going on. It could be down to your silage. It could be you, you have a high potassium silage, and you're, you know the mineral the mineral you're using isn't isn't counteracting the high potassium. Um, so, like I suppose if if now you're going to have to try just try and manage it. So maybe if, if you find that your your silage is too high and you have an alternative source silage, you 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 you'd replace it. Sometimes we find that guys are feeding minerals and they don't realize that they're feeding the wrong rate and that, that is leading to problems so they'll check that so there's numerous different things that could be causing your problem and you, you just probably need to do an investigation so I, I would call your vet just ask him what's going on have a quick look for, for, for what's happening and maybe your solution will be that you, you, have to, you have to get a different source of forage but you might have you might have that in bales you know that, that might mightn't have the, 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 the high potassium so there are solutions out there. In the meantime, what we probably should be doing is maybe giving a calcium bonus to every calf, or every cow as they calve or get ready to calve. That might just be enough to prevent the the, the, the next batch of them um, going down for you. But certainly, if you have that number, you have a problem. You have, you have you have three cows with clinical milk fever. You're going to have probably twice that many with subclinical milk fever. Watch out for your um, for uterine health later on that could affect your fertility so you do you do have an issue so i would definitely get investigated thanks a million kevin um and that's that's pretty much it for our q a everyone so um thanks for that kevin and i suppose that concludes our, our our webinar for for today and for this evening so um thank you everybody for for tuning in um i hope you really enjoyed the information that kevin has brought there this evening it's like seriously good um help and how to best prepare for the upcoming calving season so um if you did miss as i said earlier on if you did miss any parts of the webinar to start if you had to drop off through uh, you will get emailed a full replay of the webinar tomorrow evening so um make sure to check that out or watch it back if you and if you, obviously if you have any questions get in contact and um, you can see our numbers are there on screen you can also use the app there's a message center in the app so feel free to you know, if you have any questions or queries, just drop a little message in there and one of the team will get in contact if you have any issues or if you need any help with anything. Um, other than that, I suppose, thanks a million, Kevin, for your time again this evening. Um, for your no problem. Advice, and, and I'm sure everybody um, really got a lot out of it. So thanks a million once again. Um, and I'm sure we'll have you on another one again soon, Kevin. No bother. Anytime. Um, yeah, brilliant stuff. So listen, thanks again, everybody. And we're going to have another webinar probably in three to four weeks' time um, on another topic. Um, probably post calving maybe breeding or, or medicines usage as well so keep an eye out for that we'll send some some emails letting you know what's happening in a couple of weeks time um and yeah thanks very much stay safe and see you all again really really soon thanks thanks everybody